Welcome to Graphic Designer Pro. In this video, we'll show you a few ways in which you can add depth to your designs in Adobe Illustrator. So download the free template file for this lesson from the description below, and I'll pass you over to Rory now, who will take you through the processes. Thanks Ross. So jumping straight into our template file, we have some basic designs set up that we are going to apply some depth to using different techniques. So starting with this outlined text, the very first technique we're going to look at is just applying some simple perspective with the free transform tool. So it can be found over on the left hand side and the keyboard shortcut is E. And do note that if you're doing this with text, it has to be outlined for this to work. And this works with any other kind of vector graphic as well, it doesn't just have to be text. So all I need to do to apply some perspective to this text is go to one of the corner handles and you'll see the cursor change to these double ended arrows. If I just simply click and hold and then hold command or control on a PC, we can start moving the mouse to add some height to the end of this text here and give it some perspective. And we can manipulate this in our own way, which is really cool. I could equally go to any of the other corners and do the same thing. And if I hold shift, that's going to lock it to this vertical plane as well. So deselecting this, you can see the kind of perspective we can achieve with this technique. Moving on, we are going to use the blend tool to give some depth to this simple outlined text. All of the fonts we've used in this template can be found from fontspring.com and we will link them in the description below. But to add some depth to this, all I'm going to do is select the offset area sitting in behind the text here and holding option or alt on a PC I'm just going to click and drag and create a duplicate and I'm just going to drag this off to the bottom right. You can hold shift to lock this to a 45 degree angle which I'm going to do in this example so I'll go with something like that. Now I'm going to select the original offset path, go up to object, down to blend and then make. Now I already have the correct parameters set up but what you'll need to do is double click on the blend tool or over on the left hand side. Then we'll get this pop up box with the blend options and I've opted to select specified steps from the spacing drop down and I've put in a value of 100. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK and if you want to convert this to a vector you can always go up to object, expand, click OK and that's going to essentially convert all of the blended steps into their own objects and I can go to my pathfinder and unite these all together. This way I I can now go and change the color of this and we can create something a little bit more unique. Moving on, the next example is using some simple color techniques to apply some depth to some flat circles in this case. So what I'm going to do with this top circle is apply some very simple highlight and shadow areas to give it a greater feeling of depth. So to do that, I'm going to grab my curvature tool and you can use the pen tool or pencil tools if you'd rather use them as well. And I'm going to just click close to the circle but not on the path itself and all I'm really looking to do here is create a path slightly inside the top left hand side of this circle. So this is where we're going to apply the highlight. I'm going to press escape now and we're going to create another path and this is for the shadow. So again just outside the circle here clicking once take the shadow in slightly further and press escape again. So we have two paths. I'm just going to make sure that these are strokes and not fills. Now I'm going to select the original circle and I want to make a duplicate of this so just pressing command C or control C on a PC and then command F or control F and that's going to paste it in front so we now have two circles. Now I'm going to select the duplicated circle and the two new paths and go to my shape builder tool over on the left hand side shortcut is shift M and I'm just going to click in the two new areas we've created in the top left and bottom right. I can hold option and click and drag over the sections of the path that we want to get rid of. Click in the middle of the circle as well to get rid of that area. Okay so now we're ready to apply the highlight and shadow. So clicking on the top left object we've created I'm just going to change the fill color to white and I'm going to change the opacity to about 25% and you can change this value to create a more obvious highlight but I like to keep things quite subtle in this kind of situation. Now selecting the bottom right 
white object, I'm going to change the fill color to black. And again, going over to opacity, I'm going to make this 5%. So this is a very, very simple example, but you can already see that this creates the illusion of depth by adding a highlight and a shadow to an object. And this can be applied to all sorts of vector designs. Now we can also do this with gradients. So simply selecting this circle, I'm just going to double click on my gradient tool, click within our gradient slider here. And I'm also going to change this to be a radial gradient. So double clicking on the circle on the left hand side, I'm just going to apply a different color to this. We'll go with a pink and then going over to the other side, I'm just going to leave this as black for the time being. And with the gradient tool still selected, I can click and drag to reposition the highlight area and the shadow area. I could also do things like adjust the midpoint to create a harsher shadow area. And clicking off this, you can see again, this is giving a good feeling of depth to this circle just with the use of color. Moving on to our 3D effects now, I'm going to select this very simple vector object. We can go up to effect, 3D and extrude and bevel. And within here we have quite a few options to play with. So I can move this box around to change the angle at which we're seeing this vector. We also have things like the extrude depth, which is going to extrude this out even more as well. I'm going to select top from the position drop down and hovering over this box, you can see the edge is highlighting. I can simply drag down on this axis to give ourselves a little bit more perspective just on that plane. And again, I'll adjust the extrude depth slightly. We also have things like the surface rendering. So we have plastic shading at the moment, but I could change this to wireframe or diffuse shading and we're going to get different results. But I'm just going to stick with plastic shading, click OK. And if you want this to be editable as you see it, you could go up to object and expand appearance. And now we have each individual panel of this 3D design we've created. Moving on to the next 3D effect, we can also map vector artwork to a 3D shape. So to do that, we have to create a symbol with the vector artwork that we want to map. So I've got this outlined text here. If I open my symbols panel, all I need to do is click on the plus button down at the bottom, make sure the export type is set to graphic and check static symbol. Now click OK and that's been added to our symbols library. I can just delete this now and with this semicircle we are going to create a 3D sphere. So to do that again going up to effect down to 3D and revolve and at the moment it's creating this cylinder shape but all we need to do is go down to where it says from left edge click this down and select right edge and now you can see it's creating a sphere. Now we're going to go to map art make sure you check invisible geometry on the right hand side. Now we're going to go up to symbol and down at the bottom we have our text that we added as a symbol and we can reposition and resize this on this map in the middle and click OK. And again we can still play around with things like the angles. So I'm just going to go with something like that and click OK. And again I could go up to object and expand appearance and I can ungroup these and release clipping mask to reveal the text itself. Moving on to the very last example we have a simple design of a smartphone here. And again, we've applied some slight depth with the use of our blend tool technique that we used earlier to create this extruded area. But we can also use the 3D effects for creating isometric designs. So again, going up to effect down to 3D. This time I'm going to go to rotate. And from the position drop down, you'll see down at the bottom, we have some isometric options here. So in this example, I'm going to select isometric top. And you can see it's doing a perfect job of adhering to an isometric grid. So I can just go ahead and click OK. And last but not least, I can again go up to object and expand appearance. So that's it for an overview of some different techniques to add some depth to your designs in Adobe Illustrator. So as you'll have seen, there are many ways we can add depth to our vectors in Adobe Illustrator. And it really depends on the style you're going for. If you have any questions, then drop a comment down below and we'll do our best to help. And if you want to learn more about graphic design, we've created a free one hour training where you'll discover the top five secrets of successful designers, which saves you the hassle of having to figure everything out for yourself. We'll be showing you how to immerse yourself in the sector you're designing for, creative thinking and how to spark creativity, what good composition is and how to achieve it in your designs, 
how to pick the right colors for your designs and how to pick the right typefaces for your projects. So if you're serious about leveling up your design skills, then make sure to sign up for the next free webinar. Space is limited and these events always fill up fast because they're significantly better than the information others charge you for. And ours is free. The link is in the description. You're not going to want to miss it. I'll see you there.